At the turn of the century, the U.S. Air Force came up with an ambitious project, which is better known today as the X-44 Manta. This aircraft promised to be the future of stealth technology. However, its funding was cut back in 2000. But did it disappear from the radar forever, or did it simply change its image, becoming America's new sixth-generation fighter within the next-generation air dominance NGAD program? That's what we'll be figuring out today. It's not for nothing that the Lockheed Martin teams are known as risk-takers in aviation. Think about it. It was this corporation that gave us the legendary subsonic attack aircraft F-117 Nighthawk, which appeared in literally every part of Call of Duty, as well as the C-130 Hercules, the record-breaking reconnaissance aircraft SR-71, the U-2 Dragon Lady, and of course, the world-hit F-35 Lightning II fighters. In short, it'd be easier for us to name the devices that Lockheed did not work on, because they've appeared in almost every American innovative aerospace project of the last 50 years. As befits pioneers in any industry, one big risk is having many projects in the portfolio that will never see the green light, in this case largely due to the U.S. Air Force. One of these projects is the guest of our video, X-44 multi-axis no-tail aircraft or simply Manta. The name was not chosen by chance, since the X-44 was a representative of the X-Planes family, a series of experimental U.S. aircraft and missiles used to test and usher in the coolest technologies and aerodynamic concepts. The X-44 had two primary goals, become the first tailless manned aircraft to use only thrust vectoring for primary flight control to achieve new capabilities in speed, fuel efficiency, and maneuverability. To prove that simpler and cheaper forms of producing aircraft structures are no worse than expensive devices. As is the case with most of the X-Series, NASA became interested in the X-44 in order to transfer some of Manta's concepts and technologies over to existing U.S. air platforms, the F-22 Raptor and F-15 Eagle. Interestingly enough, the basis for the design of the X-44 was the F-22 fighter from Lockheed. In order not to repeat themselves when creating an experimental device, the team made radical changes to the already familiar fuselage, leaving only some native elements. Let's go through them together. Instead of the usual vertical stabilizer, Manta received a tailless shape, like Northrop's iconic bomber, the B-2 Spirit. This, of course, was done primarily in order to remain invisible to enemy radars. And such a decision was not expected to affect maneuverability, the device had to be extremely mobile due to the direction of the nozzles of the two engines in different directions. According to Air Force Magazine, Lockheed has developed and provided the U.S. Air Force with about six different airframes resembling the F-22 Raptor, but the service has not approved any of them. But the draft version of Manta interested NASA as a research platform. The engine and fuselage were moved, the wings were made triangular, and the tail was cut off, which made the X-44 completely different from its parent. Due to the same Delta wings, Lockheed planned to greatly increase the fuel capacity of Manta, unlike Raptor fighters. In fact, the Lockheed team tried to simply test a version of the even stealthier Raptor, making the combat range longer than the original and making the wings larger so that they could attach as many gifts as possible for enemy targets both in the sky and on the ground. Although it's clear that with so many weapons under the wings, the plane would immediately begin to glow like a Christmas tree on enemy radars, Therefore, one way or another, they would try to hide the arsenal in the internal compartments, like any self-respecting American stealth bomber. The list of proposed weapons included AIM-9 Sidewinder short-range air-to-air missiles, AIM-120 AMRAAM medium-range missiles, 1,000-pound GBU-32 JDAM ammunition, and GBU-39 small-diameter bombs, SDB. And let's not forget about the 600-gallon fuel tanks located under the wings of the Manta, as well as a 20mm cannon, which was to be installed internally. The X-44's estimated top speed would have been 1,500 miles per hour, with a range of up to 1,988 miles and an operational ceiling of 49,000 feet. All this was made possible by two Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW100 turbofans with afterburners and 35,000 pounds of thrust each. This would seem like the dream platform, right? Quiet, armed to the teeth, super maneuverable, and also selling at an unbeatable price? 
Well, even with such an impressive set of characteristics, funding for the X-44 nonetheless ended in 2000. The Pentagon was then relying on other, more understandable programs to create the F-35 Lightning II and continued to roll out the F-22 Raptor. The reason for this decision was outrageously simple. These aircraft seemed more promising in terms of mass production and multi-purpose use. But was Lockheed able to completely let go of its shelved project? It seems not. The fact is that the central element of the large-scale program to develop the sixth-generation American stealth fighter NGAD was the tailless aircraft, which will be assisted by CCA drones, also known as collaborative combat aircrafts. By the way, the Manta concepts could be useful here too, because despite the fact that Lockheed conceived the X-44 as a manned aircraft, it was ideal for adaptation to unmanned missions. Its stealth and ability to perform complex maneuvers made it a prominent candidate for use as a UAV. Although it's not ambition, but rather the infrared search and track erst systems that represent the main enemy to this aircraft, the United States' main adversaries have shown considerable interest in such systems over recent years. These things can detect and track even the most stealthy aerial threats. Additionally, they're immune to electronic warfare systems designed to disrupt the operation of radars as well as other radio frequency emissions. And the most threatening thing for U.S. Air Force aircraft is the fact that due to the passive operation of Erst, they may not even realize until the very last second that the enemies have detected a foreign object in their airspace. But we'll say it again, Lockheed employs professionals in their field, so they have probably already assessed all the risks associated with Earth's systems and know which of the enemies of democracy have already gotten their hands on this treasured technology. An example of how NGAD can fool Earth's systems is by introducing advanced capabilities to control the temperature of an aircraft. The fact is that Earth, even based on its name, reacts to the infrared radiation of the target. Therefore, if you can reduce it as much as possible, then it simply won't see the fighter. In addition, let's not forget about the weather factor. After all, not all battles take place under the bright rays of the sun. It could be fog, rain, or even morning haze. In such conditions, the Erst will be practically useless, but the NGAD fighter as a multi-purpose all-weather vehicle will calmly complete all assigned tasks and return to base. The increased range of action could also migrate to the new American 6th generation fighter straight from the X-44. The U.S. Air Force has very clearly indicated interest in two versions of the NGAD at once, with a short radius for combat operations in Europe and with a long radius and an impressive payload for the Indo-Pacific region, which would allow long-range missions in regions with limited refueling capabilities. Is there a chance that, during the development of Manta, Lockheed was not within range of the vehicle in terms of the distance required to escort friendly bombers into the Pacific if a conflict were to break out between the PRC and Taiwan? The question is rather rhetorical. The main thing that Manta was critically lacking was the speed of scientific and technological progress. When its development was in full swing, few people risked talking about the use of combat lasers directly from the aircraft and the introduction of artificial intelligence into the cockpit and even the pilot's helmet. NGAD will not have such restrictions because even the U.S. Air Force fighter itself has more than once been described as a family of systems where the aircraft, although it plays a central role, is supported by unmanned aircraft, collaborative combat aircrafts, or loyal wingman platforms controlled through manned-unmanned teaming, MUM-T. In recent interviews related to the further development of NGAD, representatives of the U.S. Air Force have emphasized that in recent years, they've become even more focused on the way the mission is carried out rather than on a specific platform created for only one specific task. But don't think that specialized devices are bad. It's just that the Air Force, which launched cruise missiles from the back of a C-17 as part of their Rapid Dragon program and landed people from the bomb bays of B-24s back in World War II, has always been able to surprise. Who knows which of Lockheed's bold ideas, shelved since the development of Manta, will be implemented in the U.S. Air Force's future fighter? What do you think? Will we see developments from the X-44 era in future NGAD fighters? Or will Lockheed's blueprints remain forever under a layer of dust? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.